sharp. Feel sharp. Be sharp. Use Gillette Blue Blades for the sharpest edges ever hauled. Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports is on the air. From Yankee Stadium in New York, Gillette presents the World Series. Good afternoon, baseball fans everywhere. This is Gene Kelly with Mel Allen and Al Hilbert greeting you for the Gillette Safety Razor Company as the Philadelphia Phillies and New York Yankees get ready for their third game in this 1950 championship classic. Fans for the tops in sports, tune in Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports the year round. Every Friday night, Gillette broadcasts the major boxing bout of the week for the Fistic Fancy Coast to Coast. Also, as they occur, leading events of turf, diamond, and gridiron are aired for Gillette fans everywhere. This broadcast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our listening audience. And any publication rebroadcast or other use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. For the third day running, the Yankees have won two one-run classics. Rashi, the victor over Constanti. Yesterday, Reynolds winning over Robin Roberts. We have crisp autumn weather. The sun came out strongest at about noon today, New York time. But it appears as though we're not going to have any trouble at all with the weather for the rest of the afternoon. It's a typical New York Yankee classic. For the Yankees, of course, have come through 17 times to appear in World Series classics. The Bills are two down. How many teams in the past, two down, to the defending world champions particularly, have come through to go on and win in titanic fashion? Only one. Across the river from Yankee Stadium at the famed Polo Grounds, the New York Gi Giants did it in 1921. That year, it was a best five of nine World Series. And such famous names as Art Neff, Wade Hoyt, Jeff Barnes, Paul Mays, Bill Douglas, and Bob Sharkey, along with the late Jack Pickus Quinn, participated in banner pitching classics. The Bills know they're down. And so today, skipper Eddie Sawyer, who was brought up in the richest of Yankee traditions as an organization man before having been selected as the pilot of the downtrodden Bills, has gone to a veteran left-hander. The gray-thatched southpaw, Ken Heinzelman, 35 years of age, who surprised one and all, and possibly himself most of all, in 1949 by having won 17 games. This season, 75% of the time, his team has not given him any runs to work on. As a matter of fact, his earned run average is less than four per game. He has won but three. He has lost nine. And of all the games he has started, only four have been complete successes. He has gone the distance, that is, four times. His three wins came twice over Cincinnati, once in relief, the evening when young Bubba Church was slammed under the left eye on a line drive by Ted Kozuski of the Cincinnati Reds, and then most recently in the final week of the season against the Boston Braves when he won out 12 to 4. He is what ball players refer to in the profession as a dark cross, a fellow with a quick movement, not tremendous speed, soft stuff, a sneaky fastball. And as a matter of fact, uh, his left-handed opponent today for the New York Yankees, New York-born Ed Lopez, who started major league career with the Chicago White Sox, is the same type hurler. It is the general feeling among press and radio row and the baseball wiseacres that if there is to be a hitting explosion, it should occur today. Heinzelman was looked upon as a possible surprise starter when the season began, or at least when the series began. Uh, Stengel has gone along playing strict form. He hasn't had to play anything else. For uh, you can't second guess a home run. The home run by the immortal Joe DiMaggio yesterday, which defeated Roberts of the Phils by a score of two to one. So that he began with Rashi, countered with Reynolds, and now two to the good. He doesn't exactly have to gamble with a fellow who won 18 games and lost eight in the 1950 season at Lopez. Tomorrow, he is scheduled to start his uh, wonderful rookie, Ed Ford, who won nine and lost one during this past season. Whereas today, win or lose, Sawyer's choice is just as it was prior to the game. He didn't make the official announcement until one hour ago. It was to have been either the veteran uh, Heinzelman, who would just as leave uh, shoot ducks in his hometown of Peruth, Missouri, as play ball, although he loves both of them equally, he tells me, or Bob Miller, the uh, recruit up from Class B, Terre Haute. So it is the veteran left-hander, Heinzelman, against almost the equal, equally experienced uh, Ed Lopez. Now, uh, there you are for percentage six. The uh, one team that has come from behind, two down. So uh, that now the Yankees are odds-on favorites. If not to sweep the series in four straight, then certainly uh, possibly to keep the series in New York without a move back to Philadelphia. 
Fans, the nationwide membership drive being conducted by the Crusade for Freedom ends the 16th of October, not far off. This great campaign to help lift the Iron Curtain everywhere has as its goal the signature of every American. As you know, the Crusade for Freedom was organized by private citizens under the leadership of General Lucius D. Clay of Berlin Airlift fame and is endorsed by the White House and State Department. Membership in the Freedom Crusade involves signing the Declaration of Freedom and giving all possible support to Radio Free Europe, which supplements the voice of America. Join the Freedom Crusade in your hometown or write to Crusade for Freedom Empire State Building, New York. In the background, perhaps you can uh, hear, if your ears are cocked close to your uh, loudspeakers, the fact that uh, 30 of the 50 Yankee and Phils players eligible for the 1950 World Series are graduates of the American Legion Junior Baseball Program. Here today as the guest of the Major Leagues is Captain Bill Irwin Post, number 3317 from Oakland, California, which has won the National American Legion Junior Baseball Championship for the past two years. A bit of irony there for coming to the Major Leagues to take over as the skipper of the World Championship New York Yankees uh, two seasons ago was Casey Stengel, who had piloted a veteran Oakland team to a championship. And the methods he used on the Pacific Coast League champions are those that he brought here to the Yankee Stadium in New York. Now, the physical setup of this ballpark is entirely different uh, than that we had at Shy Park. Down the right field line, it is 296 feet away for home run territory. Down the left field line, 301 feet. The barriers here are not high. In dead right and dead left, you scale uh, a small concrete and chicken wire fence of approximately uh, four to five feet. In other words, uh, it isn't a matter at all of the height of the flight of the ball as it sallies out there, a home run bow. But as the uh, park tapers off to the terrace, left center, dead center, and right center, the fence grows higher. In some sections, it is as high as uh, 10 in uh, left center deep, close to the 461 foot mark, where the monuments of uh, the late uh, Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, and uh, the great manager. Miller Huggins of the New York Yankees stand. Then there is a wire fence that goes up about 25 feet. Very rarely have home runs been hit there. The Bambino did it a couple of times, as did Lou Gehrig. Jimmy Fox of the Championship Athletics in the early 30s and late 20s did it as well. But most of the home runs are hit to dead right and dead left. There is uh, more ample territory for the outfielders to cover. As a matter of fact, the Yankees have predicted that uh, the left fielder, Sisler, who has had no experience at all in this mammoth ballpark, is going to have a bit of difficulty in fielding out there. For there is always, it seems, always a crosswind blowing in from left and out from right. In just a moment, uh, as the players are assembled, the Phils in their traveling pearl gray and red uniforms along the third baseline, the familiar Yankee Spangles of white with uh, blue stripes, the umpires at the plate. And I believe we're going to have, again, the 30 seconds of silent prayer to give uh, thankfulness of uh, living in this great country of ours to be followed by the national anthem. So uh, we are going to pause approximately 30 seconds to join in the silent prayer.
national anthem, a starringly sung and led by soprano Lucy Monroe. Now for starting lineup in this third game, a pivotal contest. For the Phillies, Eddie Wakeus, first base. Richie Ashburn, center field. Willie Jones will bat third and play third. Uh, Soya is going to a semi-platoon today against the left-handed Lopat. Ennis will bat fourth and play right field, Del Ennis. Dick Sisler will bat fifth and play left field. Granville Hemner will bat sixth and play shortstop. Andy Semenik, who is still favoring his bat ankle, will bat seventh and catch. Rookie Mike Goliath will bat eighth and play second base. And the pitcher Heintzelman, H-E-I-N-T-Z-E-L-M-A-N, his first World Series appearance, his record for 1950, three wins, nine setbacks. For the New York Yankees, leading off and playing shortstop, Phil Rizzuto. Batting second and playing second base, Jerry Coleman. Batting third and playing uh, and catching, Yogi Berra. Batting fourth and playing center field, Joe DiMaggio. Batting fifth and playing left field, here is the platoon for Stengel, Hank Bauer. Batting sixth and playing first base, Johnny Mars. Batting seventh and playing third base, right-handed batting, Billy Johnson. Batting eighth and playing right field in his first World Series appearance this season, Cliff Mapes, and the pitcher is Lopat, 18 and 8. Now, 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. <clears throat> the umpires are switched around, uh, moving uh, clockwise as the series progresses. And uh, we will have Dusty Boggess calling balls and strikes. Charlie Berry at first base. Jocko Conlon at second base. And Bill McGowan at third. With the line umpires Al Barlick of the National League and Bill McKinley of the American League. So, in a moment, the struggle is about to get underway. The crowd is almost at capacity. At least 60,000 were certain. The Yankees trot out onto the field. And uh, led by them, well, Joe DiMaggio, his ninth World Series. And there's only one thing that Joe has on our confrere here today, Mel Allen. He's got one more series than Mel. So here's the gentleman that's going to give you the play-by-play word from Upper New York City, the Bronx, the Bombers. Mel Allen and his eighth World Series. Melvin? And as we get ready to move into the final four and a half innings of the third game of the World Series, it's my pleasure and privilege to introduce my colleague, who today is celebrating two things, broadcasting a World Series and his 32nd birthday. Mmm, you're a young man. Thanks, Pop. Kenny Heinzelman into the motion, throwing the batter, Billy Johnson, who uh, struck out, swinging on a curveball for the third out back in the second inning. And it's low and away, ball one. Johnson batting right-handed. The pitch, this curve is in there for a call, strike one. One ball, one strike. I'm the kind of fellow, Allen, that makes you feel like a grandpa, I know. I hear you, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> one and one. Pitching. Low outside, slow curve. Ball two. Both uh, left-handers today have whisked very good hooks in there. Low pat seems a bit quicker than Heinzelman. But uh, the veteran left-hander of the Phillies has done a fine job despite being behind now. One or nothing. Now the 2-1 pitch. Swinging. A ground ball. Toward third. A sweet shot by Willie Jones. Up of it. Over to first. In time. Willie Jones came up with the best infield play of the day by going well to his own left on a ball that seemed base hit down toward the hole between short and third and speared it with his glove hand, winning over to first in time to retire. Fairly fast runner. One away. Here's Cliff Mates, left-handed batter. And the first curve is low. Ball one. Ken Heinzelman working on the mound on Mapes, who pulls the ball tremendously when he meets it toward right. Is played that way right now. 1-0. Two pumps by Heinzelman. He delivers outside and low. Ball two. Slow curve. Two ball, no strike count on Cliff Mapes. He popped out high, very high, to first baseman Wake of the Phillies in his first trip up. 0-1. for one. 2 nothing pitch. Strike one call. He crossed him up with uh, what we've been referring to as a sneaky fastball, throwing it tight near the fist. 2-1. One gone, nobody on. Blast of the fifth. Score Yankees one, the Phillies nothing. No more than one run has separated these teams all the way in three games. A pitch swinging and missing for strike two. That was a uh, kind of a speedy pitch with a wrinkle on it, breaking away from Mates that time on the outside corner. Big strapping left-handed swinger. Two and two. On deck, the pitcher, Ed Lopat. The pitch way outside and low to run it full. Three and two. Heinzelman began by running the... Uh, 
count. Very deep. He passed Rizzuto and Berra. Both of them in the first inning and then walked Filligan in the third. Now he's behind again. The swing pitch. There's a ball lofted to short left field. Sisler moving in. Flex down the glasses. Moves under. Reaches up and grabs it for the put out. That's all for Cliff Mates. The crowd in left field is on Sisler. He has not done a thing, as you know, with a stick. Moving into this third game of the series. And of course, uh, he was the hero of the Sunday Climax. Now the crowd again will cheer for Ed Lopez. Stocky, blonde left-hander, born in New York, and now lives in Arkansas. Swing left-handed. He's over one. Was called out on strikes in the third inning. Heinzelman's curve is taken by Lopez outside. Ball one. One ball, no strike. Glenn to southpaw in the motion. Delivers. A swing, and there's a line drive toward right center field. In there for a base hit. Moving over to field the ball is Richie Ashburn. And Lopat is on with a third Yankee hit. Coming with two out in the last of the fifth inning. That was a well-tagged single. Over the head of the second baseman, Mike Oliat, to short right center. Now Scooter Rizzuto. His lack of height has paid off for the Pepper Pot shortstop today. He has been walked twice, and each time, the count on him when he was passed was three and nothing. A single to right center now. Lopat on at first base. Third Yankee hit. The pitch to Rizzuto, batting right-handed, is high and wide. For the short, shortstop. Ball one. Heinzelman has given up three walks and two to Phil. He pitches, and Phil swings. Upper cuts the ball to the third row of seats upstairs. Yankee Stadium, as you know, is triple deck. It's a beautiful ballpark, designed especially for the national pastime. One-on-one on Rizzuto, new ball in play by umpire Bogus, calling balls and strikes. Heinzelman stretches, delivers. There's a bunt to the uh, left of the plate, and then Bogus calls it foul. Semenik is protesting that uh, Rizzuto ran into his own bunted ball. And there's a three-way conference along with umpire Vargas, created by Jones from third, the pitcher Heinzelman and Catch Yosemite. It goes as foul, strike two. Vargas saying that he immediately called it foul, bouncing off the left of the plate and then moving toward the right. Draw the count on Phil, one and two. Score one to nothing, the New York Yankees over the Phillies. The Yankees home for the first time in the series now. Both Pat with a warm-up jacket leading off first. Uh, not too close to guard by Wake the first sacker. The stretch by Hanselman, the pitch. He swings. There's a super to second, and Goliath under grabs for the foot out. He hit it off the handle, and the crowd for a moment got themselves a thrill, uh, since uh, Phil took a very healthy cut. But it was an off-the-handle blooper right to the second baseman, Mike Goliath, for the third out. So, in the Yankee half of the fifth inning, no runs, a single to right center by pitcher Eddie Lopez. The Yankees' third hit. No errors by the Phillies, and Lopat left on. Five inning totals. New York, one run. Three hits, no errors, three left. The Phillies, no runs, four hits, one error, and a very costly one at that. Four men left on. I've noted here today that the uh, crowd has been a bit more demonstrative. Of course, it's sizable. There must be easily 60,000 backing the Yankee Stadium stands. Uh, the Phils, of course, so hungry for 35 years for their first pennant since uh, 1915, naturally had a very partisan audience down in the city of Brotherly Love. The Phils are down for the third straight time. They have never held the lead in any of the games. And their first offensive offering here in the top of the sixth inning is going to be the toehead, Richie Ashburn, who has played very well in the field and has done well enough with a stick except in this game. Lopat's wide sweeping hooks, his roundhouses, his down breaking dippers, have caught Ashburn paralyzed twice, making him swing and a miss for strike three on a curve in the first, and he took a fastball, crossing him up in the third. 0 for 2 is Richie. Has a choke grip on the bat, well up on the stick, running left handed. Lopat motion throws. A fastball wide of the plate, ball one. Eddie came down, more or less crossfire that time, moving to his own left. Ashburn to be followed by Puttenhead Jones and Dell Ennis. Infielder Johnson at third, very shallow. Lopat throws, and he half swings and gets a foul. Zipped off the handle of his bat to the left of the plate and behind. Ball one, strike one. Top of the six. Time running out on the Phillies, who have not found the answer. 
to producing the cluster. For that matter, neither team has. No more than one run scored at any one time in any one inning. One ball, one strike to Ashburn. The left-hander delivers. He swings and cuts a high pop foul out of play behind the plate. And just missing the screen to our left. Our position for calling this play-by-play on Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports, for Miller, myself, and Al Helfer, is perfect. We are right smack dab behind the plate. Not too high, not too low. Just shallow enough so that none of the action out on the field escapes us. One ball, two strikes. Lopat ready, throws. Ashburn swings as a high foul fly, moving to the stands in short right field, out of play. Some 15 or 16 rows into the boxes. The left fielder has no foul territory at all to play to speak of. In other words, most balls hit to the territory allowed would be handled either to the outracing shortstop or third baseman. Left and right are pretty flush for the gardeners out there. Again ready for one and two. The pitch by Lopat. He swings and misses. He struck him out. Now there's an entity. During the 1950 season, Ashburn never struck out as many as three times in one game. And so he does it for the first time in 1950 in the third World Series contest. That's the third time Lopat has nabbed him on strikes, and that he's fourth strikeout victim. He got him on a curve and a dandy. One down. Willie Jones, one for two. Single through the hole to left field, back in the third inning. Batting right-handed. Takes inside on a cross-up fastball. Ball one. With a hit and run on with Wakus at first base in the first inning, Jones dribbled out. Lopat to Mize. And then single to left with two gone in the third. Now one away, one and oh. Strike one call. That thing looked like a sailor. It seemed to rise up a bit and then fall plump into the mid of Tachiyoki Barra. One and one. One ball, one strike. One gone, nobody on. Fills top of the sixth. Score Yankees one, Phillies nothing. Pitch, a swing and a foul right to the Yankee dugout. Now, during regular season play, I suppose the Yankees would bring out the white cherry towel. This is kind of a grim affair for both teams. The money is on the line. The proficiency, four out of seven. The first to prove. And the Yankees, of course, two games up. Now one and two count on Jonesy. North Carolinian from Laurel Hill. Low pad in the motion. Fires. Jones swings. A chopping, zipping ground ball foul along the third base side of the diamond. And a fan <laughs> reaches over from one of the boxes. And while he had a little effort not having uh, taken his physical training lately, I surmise he finally picked it up for a souvenir. Lopat uses this moment now to rub up the ball a little bit, go to the horizon, marshal his own physical forces, for he is well ahead. He is one man down, and the count on a long ball hitter, Jones, one and two. Now ready. Lefty Lopat getting the sign from Dara. Stocky catcher in the rocking chair. Set the pitch. He throws. Jones cuts. There's a high twisting pop foul. It's going out of play. Mize gives it a try, but to no avail. Dipping in. So the uh, battle now between Jones, the hitter, and uh, Lopat, the pitcher, drags out a little bit. The tempo of the first game was comparatively slow for a one to nothing duel. It ran better than two hours. Yesterday's was better than three hours, but it ran into extra innings for the first time since 1946. This is about midway between. One ball, two strikes. Left hand Lopat delivers. Jones swings and misses. He struck him out. That appeared to be a curveball thrown inside. So he fans the first two men to face him in the top of the sixth. Mel tells me that Lopat has never been known, particularly as a strikeout artist. And while he now has uh, all told five, getting Ashburn three times, and Semenik once, and with Jones now, he is really delivering that curve. This is a well-scouted series. It's evident that the fellows have scouted both clubs. New weaknesses. The pitching comes to the fore. And now, the most dangerous hitter potentially of the Phillies, Del Ennis. is a high curve around the visor of the cap, ball one. Dell has bounced out to third for the third out in the first and popped out to Rizzuto. On a handle hit curve for the third out in the third, he has yet to get his first World Series hit. Though he led the Phillies in hitting in 1950 with an average of 313. One and oh on him. Set for the pitch, delivering. Strike one call, fastball. A 
good half of the uh, diamond. That is, the inner portion of it is covered now by the first base stand shadows, as well as the entire right field sector where Mates, the Yankee outfielder, is in a crouch right now, ready for any eventuality. And it's uh, primarily hits to left and left center. They play him to pull to left. One and one. The pitch. A swing. A line drive toward right field. Maybe good for excavation. Sitting in there. Rolling to the wall. And it's round first. Heads to second. Mates plays it off the wall. Goes to second. It's a stand-up double. The first hit of the Wales series, Waddell Ennis. And the Phils now have a runner in scoring position with two men out. The Phils, you know, lead the Yankees in extra base hits. For the Phillies, that is their fourth double. They have one triple, no home runs. DiMaggio's homer yesterday has been the lone distance clout of this classic. A right field double hitting to the opposite field. Del Ennis. Dick Sisler. Over two. Batting left hand is swinging. There's a line drive. Left field. Base it. Ennis rounding third. He's going to score, and the game is tied 1-1. Dick Sisler, who had been one of the hitting goats, I shouldn't say hitting, I should say uh, hitting advisedly, a uh, batting goat, comes through when the Phils need him most, and it's a brand new ball game, boys and girls. One and one. It comes with two out. Both Ennis and Sisler hit safely for the first time in the series, and they make it pay off. This has all occurred with two men gone, just as the Yankees scored with two out. Back in the third inning. The batter is Granville Hammer with Sisko leading off first base. Lopat stretches, delivers. Hammer swings and misses on a down-breaking curve ball. Strike one. Sisko's ball barely eluded the grass. A pint-sized risotto, and it may well have been that an average-sized fellow could have grabbed that, but Phil certainly gave it a try. It rolled into short left center field. Nothing in one count to Hammer. One for two. The pitch. A butt attempt is missed. A snap throw to first. He's out. A great play by Yogi Berra as Hamner attempted to choke up the defense by laying down a butt to put men on. Berra snapped through to Johnny Mize who put the tag quickly and aptly on Sisler. The play went the catcher, Berra, to the first baseman, Johnny Mize, and the Phillies are retired. The count, incidentally, had gone uh, nothing into on Hamner. One run earned, two hits, the run driven in by Sisler, no errors by the Yankees, and nobody left on. Dara and Mize took care of that. Five and a half innings. The Phillies won, the Yankees won. Sid Gordon, slugging outfielder of the Boston Braves, says that in his book, the Gillette Super Speed Razor tops them all. Yes, and here he is to tell you why. Fans, that's because it gives me the swellest shades I've ever had. No other razor I know about can match it. There's nothing to take apart or put together. Nothing to jam or clog, right? Not only that, Gene, but it changes blades easily and rinses clean in a jiffy. To sum it up, the Gillette Super Speed Razor is the only razor that combines real shaving satisfaction with instant blade changing and double-edge economy. Much more, the Gillette Super Speed Razor is the greatest shaving value ever offered. You get it in a handsome styrene case with a 10-blade sensor. A big $1.75 value for only a dollar at any convenience store. Now to the last half of the sixth inning. Heinzelman set on the first pitch, and the batter up there is Jerry Colvin who took call strike one. A down-breaking curveball. Coleman batting right-handed is one for two and has wrapped home the one Yankee run. Ball one is wide of the plate on a slow pass curve. One and one. Well, the excitement that time, and you could see that the fans, though primarily Yankee rooters, were for the underdog at the moment as the Bills tied it up. Two pumps by the left hand. Heinzelman delivers. Wide and high. Ball two. Two and one count. That's the first real excitement that the Red Cap visitors had given the fans here at Spacious Yankee Stadium. A two and one count to Coleman. Last of the six. The pitch. The swing. A line drive. Left field. In there. Good for a base hit. Sister fields it quickly. Coleman turns it first. And the whip comes into the relay man, Granny Hamra, holding Jerry at first base. That is the fourth Yankee hit. All of them singles. And Coleman has two. Now, 
Yogi Berra, who walked once on a 3-2 count in the first and tapped out weakly to the left of the mound in the fourth inning. All for one officially. Looking for the bunt, he cuts on the first one and fouls it upstairs, third deck. Strike one. All of these World Series broadcasts are being carried to our armed forces around the world through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. And I am sure that the members of the 28th Keystone Division in Indiana are happy that Kurt Simmons is here today. There's a quick throw over to first, but uh, Coleman is back with room to spare safely. A man on, Jerry Coleman, slightly second baseman of the Yankees with a left field single. The pitch to Barrett, the swing, a line drive toward right, foul. Boy, that thing was tagged. And Barra put all of his chunky beef into that swing. The wind today is playing hob with a long ball. And uh, you'll note there have been a couple of uh, Texas League singles. Humpback liners, as they call them. Nothing in two count, Yogi, but Tanner Banner. Infield looking for the double play now. The stretch by Heinzelman. He pitches. Wide and high of the plate. Ball one. One and two. Short tied. One one. A Yankee run in the third. A Phil run in the sixth. Heinzelman quick pitching now. Delivers again. A high sweeping slow curve. Too high. Ball two. Two two. One on. Nobody out for the New York Yankees. Last of the six. Endeavoring now to get back that run. As the Phil's darn it off. Eddie Lopat. Stretch. He pitches. He swings and sends a high pop near the plate. Semenik appears to have the room to the right of the plate. Under. Squeezes. He's out. Farrah pops out about 30 feet behind and to the right of the plate for the catcher. One guard. And now, Joe DiMaggio with one away and a teammate at first base. Joe has a single in two trips. And uh, his single was of a variety. We were describing to you just a moment ago. There's a crosswind here at the stadium. So the Yankee Clipper steps in. Heinzelman throws. Joel takes high around the chin. Ball one. Joel fly to short right. Two hundred in the first inning. And then he got his single in the fourth, but was left standard as Heinzelman bore down. One ball, no strike. Infield deep now to the left side, swinging a long fly ball deep to left field. Sisler has it and takes it. The runner at first, Coleman, faked off the bag for the moment as the relay came in by a hammer of the shortstop to second base. DiMaggio flies deep to left. Two gone. Hank Bauer. Broad shoulder. Outfielder playing left field today. He had played right in the first two games. It's a quick throw to first. Coleman back safely, and Wakers didn't even bother to put the tag on him. No count yet on Bauer, who is 0 for 2. A grounder to the mound, and a fly ball to right. Batting right handed. Very orthodox stance. Heinzman stretches, delivers. Bauer takes wide and high. Ball one. The opportunity of uh, seeing Bauer and Mates in the same outfield one time, and they were the slugging leaders of the American Association. There's a high twister looping itself up toward the third deck along the first base line and dipping down there. Uh, you see the second deck here at the stadium jucks back, and the upper deck moves out. And uh, I think three rows of people get themselves a thrill for the chance. It's a good-natured, though cool, crowd today because of the weather. One one. He delivers. Hank swings. There's another one. This time, definitely upstairs. And out of play. Strike two. Score so one and one. The Yanks and the Phils and another thriller dealer. One to nothing the opening day. Two to one in ten innings yesterday. And one to one with two gone and a man on in the last of the six here today. Heinzelman takes time for pause. Looks him over. In the stretch. The kick he throws. High. Very high. And Semenik had to climb up on the ladder that time to bring it down. Ball two. Even up. Two and two. Coleman at first. Neither Barra nor DiBaggio have been able to move Jerry along. A big pitch. The runner breaks. He sends a very high pop behind second base. Goliath backtracking on the grass, five feet back, grabs it for the put-out, and that's all for the Yankee threat in the last of the sixth inning. 
Give it to the second baseman, Mike Olea. For New York, no run. A leadoff single by Cohen. The Yankee fourth hit. No errors by the Phils. And one man left on. At the end of six. The Yankees won. The Phillies won. As we pause ten seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Yankee Stadium in New York. Phil's fans, or at least those who are pulling for the Phil's stretch. And now, uh, I don't know uh, what it is. I know that most of these folks must be uh, Yankee fans, but I think out of uh, good sportsmanship and nature, they're stretching in both halves. What do you think? Well, they often do that here at the stadium. There are a great many of out-of-towners, and I think so many of them are just stretching because it's the seventh inning without regard to partisanship. So there are those among them, naturally, who are... Phillies rooters and are standing. Others decided that being a little cool, might as well get up right now. I want my birthday cake still hot tonight, Alan. Gee whiz, all those candles on there. You want me to hire somebody? Or I'll, blow them, I'll blow my hands while I'm blowing out the candles. <laughs> Here's Granny Hammer. Short stop. One for two. Single. Off Johnson, the third baseman's glove, in the second, and a fly ball to right in the fourth. Pretty well hit. Nice catch by Mace. A low pass pitching. Granny swings and uh, ticks it off foul. Sarah traps the ball and keeps it in play. He dropped it. Strike one. Hamner to be followed by catcher Andy Semnick and second baseman Goliath. Nothing in one. Eddie throws. Hamner swings. Ground ball through the middle. Out the center field. Mace hit. Hamner takes the turn at first, and Abaj comes in and uh, returns it to Rizzuto. That, incidentally, is the third consecutive hit of Lopez. You see, Ennis had double to right with two down in the sixth, and Sisler had single to left. And now, uh, here is another single. Bengoff, who is the bench co- uh, jockey, or cop as they call him, and is a former Yankee of uh, great renown. He's caught here for Miller Huggins. Uh, talks things over with Semenik. Andy has one for two. He singled through the hole between the bag and the shortstop in the second and then struck out swinging on a low pack curveball in the fourth. Hammer on with a through the middle ground single to center. And his fourth World Series hit. Infield moved in. Lopat stretches, delivers. There's a bunt toward the mound. Lopat up with it. Throw to first. He's out. The sacrifice works. He turns as a left-hander will in pivoting on a throw and looked toward Rizzuto, but going in high on the slide was Hamner. So that Eddie had but one play and the sacrifice goes down as a queen one. The pitcher, Lopat, to the second baseman, Jerry Coleman, covering. Runner at second. And the man... Uh, upon whom it seems that every time we look up Mel and I has runners on for him. But he's failed to produce quite consistently, though he has played a very sparkling game of field. Mike Olia, 0 for 2, ground ball to the pitcher, ground ball to shortstop. Man on second, one away. The low pat pitch is swung on and grounded. Third base side, foul by three feet, and uh, Johnson backhanded at that time. And this large crowd, appreciative of every effort, fair or foul, gives Mr. Johnson a nice round of applause. One away. The single by Hamner was the seventh Phil's hit. Score tied, one and one, top of the seventh. A man at second, and one man up. Nothing in one, low pass set. Kicks, throws. Juliet swings, line drive the center field, in there for base hit. Here is Hamner, rounding third, heading for the plate. The throw comes in, he's safe. Phils, who had failed to hit consistently, are producing here today. Hamner comes across for the lead run, and for the first time in the World Series of 1950, the Phillies are leading in a ball game. In uh, right field, Big 26 Mel is getting up to uh, warm up out there. Might be a catcher, might be a pitcher, of course. Tom Ferrick, who now lives in Philadelphia, though he was born in this city. 
and has been great in relief rolls for single. The Phillies have Goley at it first. DiMaggio's throw just missed Severa as Hammer split across the planter safely with the Phillies' second run, and they now lead 2-1. to one. Heinsum in the batter, the infield looking for the butt. Ken bats right-handed. Low pat pitches, Ken bunts. Foul. Uh, Lopat made a token throw down at second base, and little Phil Rizzuto had a leap in the air. Like a championship herd by that time, as Goliath stormed in high on him. But it's foul strike one. Yogi was like a cat on that ball, and Goliath would have been an easy prey out there at second base. Foul strike one on the butt attempt. Score two to one now, top of the seventh. And this game picks up an interest. The uh, crowd, chilled by the weather, warms up to the situation. Johnson way in on the grass. Lopat ready, delivers. A pitch out, a throw to first. He's back safely. And a good trap is made by Coleman to save the ball from rolling away. The throw was low in the dirt. And Jerry fell to his knees and made sure that it put on an old-fashioned Pepper Martin body block. Oh, uh, Jerry was on the alert. He's played great ball this series. Goliad, of course, was safe. And on the pitch out, the count is 1-1. One one. They could have well afford the pitch out to Heinzman, you see. Very weak hitter, 0-2. And a shoot throw to first by the left-hander. Bill White, who at one time was Yankee property and now heralds for the White Sox, is supposed to have the cleverest of that motion. He's a left-hander. 1-1. One one. Here's the bunt to the right of the mound. A beauty. Up with it. Lopat fumbles it. Picks it up. Throws him out. A faster runner might have beaten that one out. But Lopat knew he had only one play, and in his anxiety, bobbled it for a moment, but retired Heinzelman with room to spare. It's another sacrifice, and it is scored. The uh, pitcher, Lopat, to the second baseman, Coleman, covering. That's the second sacrifice in this inning, and moves Goliath to the midway, just as Hamner was moved along by Semenix, getting himself up. Second, the Lee's lead, two to one. Two gone. Goliath, 15 foot lead off the bag. Wait gets the batter. Eddie, one for three. Batting left handed. Lopat throws. Wait gets cuts the foul. A real zipper off Terra's mask and chest protector. You know, when Conlon became injured in the first game, he decided he was going back to the American League. Pad. It's the airfield, you know. He feels he didn't get enough protection. Jocko umpiring uh, right now to the right of the bag at second. Nothing in one count away. Just low pat now taking a lot of his good old time. Chunky left hander stretching to check only out at second. Delivers. Swinging. A fly. Lost it pretty deep toward left field. But moving back and under his power and grabs it for the third out to retire the side. Wakers flies to left. They were playing him shallow and Barr had a charge back. That's the third out. In the seventh inning for the Phils, the lead run. There are two hits with a pair of sacrifices thrown in. The run scored by Hamner, driven in by Goliath. No Yankee errors, and one man Goliath left on. Six and a half inning score. The Phils two, the Yankees one. As Sid Gordon of the Boston Braves told you in his own words last inning, the Gillette Super Speed Razor can't be matched for shaving ease and satisfaction. Men, this razor gives you shaves worth talking about. Good-looking, refreshing shaves that really rate. Much more, it saves you time and bother. For it changes blades instantly, cleans instantly, and never jams or claws. No wonder men everywhere say it's the most convenient razor they have ever used. Believe me, it's all of that and plenty more. Why not enjoy modern shaving comfort and convenience? Buy a Gillette Super Speed Razor at your favorite store. Without exception, it's the greatest shaving value ever offered. The Gillette Super Speed Razor comes with a 10-blade Gillette dispenser and a handsome, serviceable styrene travel case. All in all, you get a big dollar 75 cent value for only a dollar. The big cat, the whale hitter, John Myers, who was rescued and it appeared that his National League career was over by the Yankees this season and has come through in tremendous style. Leads off to face Heinzelman in the last of the seven. And the Yankee fans storm up for a rally. Myers 0 for 2, batting left-handed. Swings and cuts a high pop foul. Upstairs over our heads and out of play. 
Derek has now sat down in the Yankee bullpen, which is almost completely blocked from our view. They have an alley, you know, in right and left. Nothing in one demise. The pitch taken inside near the hand and high. Ball one. John popped to second in the second and it was bounced out to the first baseman in the fourth. Ball two is a curve that just missed inside. It was around the belt, but too close. Two and one. Nobody out and nobody on for the Yankees. Last of the seventh. Score. Two for the Phils, one for the Yanks. The windup by Heinzelman. He pitches. The swing, a high fly to deep right field. Moving back under and it's right near the wall and grabs it. That ball was hit just about as well as any toward the right field sector. And Dell Ennis was precisely right at the base of the 344-foot marker in right field territory. As a matter of fact, the fans out there were all standing up. Someone ready, perhaps, to grab a possible souvenir. A long fly out to right field. One away. And now, Billy Johnson, 0 for 2, batting right-handed. Strike one call. Slow curve on the inside corner. Billy, 0 for 2. Formerly a Jersey boy, now makes his home in Augusta, Georgia. The ball's one strike, two pumps by Huntsman. He throws, outside and low. Mr. Robert Tyre Jones. I imagine uh, might be one of our listeners today, and uh, leading citizen of Augusta, Georgia. Great baseball fan, Bobby. One on one. One down. Two pitches. Outside. Ball two to Johnson. Two and one. Russ Meyer. Two ball pitching specialist. Warming up for the field as a safety measure. Two and one. Swinging a foul. Upstairs. Third deck out of play. Two and two. Score two to one. The Bills uh, have racked up eight hits against Lopat. And Einzelman has forced the Yanks to have that total. Four. Yankee run in the third. Phil runs in the sixth and seventh. Einzelman set now on the square count pitch. Delivers a zipping foul right to the lower box seats and right. And the crowd ooh, as if to say, this is safety week, fans. Get out of the way. Here comes that ball. Square count. Well, he struck out in the second and bounced out the third in the fifth. Feet fairly close together. Waiting. Swinging the down. Struck it out. A stop third ball. Well, there's no question that the psychology of the crowd is for the underdog. That is the club that is two games down. And for uh, that kind of rooting, I guess that Yankee Stadium is as good a mecca as any place in the country. They are cheering Heisman's great effort, for he won only three games during the regular season and completed but four. He faces Big Cliff Mates, 0 for 2, left-handed swinger. He pitches, and it strikes one ball. That was a sneaky fast one that cut the knees on the outside corner. Dusty Vargas calling him behind the plate. Very ruddy complexion, Chucky Texas. Pint size, Cal Hubbard. Nothing in one. Swinging a ground ball, hit softly to second, up with the Goliath, quit the first, and gone. Side retired. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. Our Gillette seven inning totals read like this. For the Phillies, two runs, eight hits, one error, and the Phillies have five men left. For the Yankees, one run, four hits, no errors. Four Bronx Bombers have been left on. I was talking with the aforementioned Tom Ferrick, the uh, broad-beamed right-hander of the Yankees before the game today. Tom, uh, as you know, is a Philadelphia. Matter of fact, he was asking us about the chances of a Penn football team this Saturday at Berkeley, California, against Happy Waldorf, Pine, California, 11. But uh, then it switched, of course, to baseball. He felt that the difference between these two teams thus far was not exactly proficiency and ability because the pitchers had the uh, duke. It was, he said, experience. He said, let's face it, Kelly, uh, these teams have been so well scouted by Bill Skiff and Johnny Noon of the Yankees and George Earnshaw and Jack Sanford of the Phillies that the experience here pays off. The movement of the feet around the box, the slight shift toward left or right, the knowledge. 
that you have been a World Series performer. He says, this is my first year with the Yankees, but that's my observation. And I imagine it's as clean cut as any that you could look for. As the series now moves into the eighth inning of the third game with the Phils leading 2-1, to one, and Ashburn is the batter. Richie cuts and gets a handle foul to the left side of the diamond and well into the stand. Strike one. He has been struck out three times. Three times the charm, Mr. Lopez. Jockey Ed goes to the rosin. He knows now that he has found this fellow three times. He's got to watch him. Johnson shallow at third base. The windup, he pitches, he swings. A ground ball pass by the right field. Flips with a hit. Ashburn takes the turn at first. Mates up with the ball. Whips a real line to the uh, cutoff man, Jerry Coleman, at second. Lead off single in the eighth inning. And again, the hurry call comes from pitching coach Bill Pan, Jim Turner, and manager single to the Yankee bullpen. Where well, I surmise again, Ferrick will be called upon. Oh, there's another one out there again now. Uh, that's the bullpen catcher, I guess. No, uh, Tom Ferrick. Okay. And Mage Halk out there. Bullpen catcher. Ashburn on with a single. The Phil's ninth hit. The batter is Willie Jones. Infield looking for the bunt. Comes around. The bunt along the first baseline foul. In the first game of the series, when Hop supplanted Mize defensively, they said it was a great move by Stengel. And that time, again, uh, you could see that Mize had a bit of difficulty bending to his own right as it went through the hole between first and second for a ground single to right for Ashburn. A runner on. Jones, one for three. Quick throw to first. And the fleet Ashburn is back. In a running contest, I should imagine he'd run one, two, three. If the, both clubs were involved. Ashburn, nothing in one to Jones. Coming around again. Squaring away for the butt. There's one along the first base line. Mize up with it. One play. First base. Coleman covering. In time. The third sacrifice in two innings. Moving Ashburn to second with one away. Play scored. Mize the first sacker to Coleman. The second baseman covering first. part, we've had pretty straight baseball here. The percentage, you see, uh, the sacrifice. Pitch out by Barra on a fine pickoff play. Which wound up in the sixth, you remember? I guess this was so happy, he forgot he was on first base. Now here's Ennis with a runner at second, and one down. Lopat delivers. Close. Ball one. Lopat now hurling a bit more cautiously than he did early in the struggle. For this is still a fine ball game. So the Phils have out hit the Yankees 9-4. They leave them 2-1. So the defenses had to be on the alert. And the pitchers have had to bear down with runners on. Ashburn, 15-foot lead off second. A stretch by Lopat. He pitches in it who swings. It's a high fly ball to medium left field. Moving over for the ball is Sauer. Damage moves in, says, I'll take it. And the center fielder makes the put out. So the put out was made in uh, medium left center field. And it flies to DiMaggio. Two gone. Now Sister, who had been the victim of cat calls, particularly those seated in left field, but now has uh, spread the uh, imaginative appetite of the fans with his single that batted home Ennis for the first kill run in the sixth inning. Six, one for three, though picked off by Berra to Mize in the sixth. Bounced out the first and the fourth and grounded out to Coleman in the second. Two gone. The low patch pitch. Kicking, he throws. Wide on a curve, ball one. Sisler, a left-handed batter. Two to one ball game. Pitches. Close. Ball two. Inside. Well, uh, the Phils fans have been complaining that their favorites haven't hit. They're certainly out hitting the Yankees today, but the big problem has been hitting in the clutch with a runner on in scoring position. 2-0 to Sisler. Left hand low pat. Studying. Delivering. Swinging a foul. Right to our Gillette. Boot. And in and out. Just to our left, it hit a typewriter. I think uh, 
Mike Javen, one of the New York writers who covers the Brooklyn Dodgers during the season. Probably saying it shouldn't happen to shot. <laughs> Two and one. Outfield pushed slightly toward the uh, right, but they play him straight away in all sectors on Sister. Two one pitch. Swinging a foul. Up high towards second base. Coleman calling for it in front of Mize. Mize says, I'll take it, and he does. <laughs> Big ruddy complexion. John ran right in front of Gary that time to wind up the inning for the Phillies by grabbing Sister's pop fly. First baseman in the eighth inning. The Phillies no runs, one hit. No Yankee errors, and one man Ashburn left on at second. Seven and one half innings have gone by in the third game. The Phillies two, the Yankees one. Day after day, Gillette Blue Blades get the call from millions of men who want to look sharp and feel sharp. That's because the finest of razor blades give the quickest shades the quickest and easiest in the book. Now to save time, save fuss, buy Gillette Blue Blades in the Gillette dispenser that zips them out on rest. You change blades presto and also solve the problem of discarding used blades safely and easily. You see, this modern Gillette dispenser has a built-in compartment for the permanent disposal of old blades. When you remove a dull blade from your razor, slip it into the back of the dispenser. This double-duty magazine costs nothing extra. You get 20 Gillette Blue Blades, 40 shaving edges for 98 cents. 10 blades, 49 cents. Look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. Use Gillette Blue Blades with the sharpest edges ever hauled. 64,505 have paid their way into the stadium today. A banner stadium crowd, and now, defensively, Sawyer moves in, his fleet rookie up from Toronto, Notre Dameer Jack Mayo, M-A-Y-O. This is the second time he has taken over a similar post in the series. Jack Mayo. He'll take over in left field. Of course, he hasn't batted officially yet, but for the time being, spot him number five. Woodling is going to be set up now in the last of the eighth as a pinch hitter for Ed Lopez. Woodling, a left-handed batter, takes high, ball one. Gino, of course, has started the first two games. He is three for eight on a series play, hitting a 375. Heinzelman's curve is in there. A call strike one. Last of the eighth. Woodling batting for the pitcher, Lopez. Left-handed swinger. Heinzelman ready. Delivers. He swings and misses. Strike two. Heinzelman, you'll see, is not one of these fellows that works up the perspiration very easily. And he has uh, apparently kept on to a store of reserve in this game. He's a quick worker, but paces himself. Doesn't throw too hard. One and two. The big pitch. A half swing, but a take. Low, ball two. Those umpires watch the break of the wrist. The intent on those half swings. 2-2 two, two count to Woodling. The pitch. He swings. There's a lazy pop fly going for a shortstop. Under it, Hamner, the shortstop. Waiting. Squeezes it for the first stop. One down. Well, that means the Yankees will offer up probably Tom Ferrick in the fill half of the ninth inning. The Phillies lead 2-1. to one. The Yankees, uh, Mel points out, have uh, hit but five bounces to the infield. Phil Rizzuto on twice with walks and the one Yankee run scores and a pop fly to second. Swings and sends a zipper to third. A grass cutter. Jones Spears goes to first in time. Two up, two down, last of the eighth. Third to first was the play. First, this is a big game for the Phillies. They drop this one, and they're, it's a far gone conclusion. They're out of it. But a 2 1 standing, particularly since they come into the stadium by leading, if they should win, changes the complexion of the series entirely. The batter is Jerry Coleman, who is two for three. And a run driven in. Looks at the low curve outside, right-handed swinger, ball one. This slender second baseman. It appears whenever the chips are down, performs greatly. He did so in his last World Series in 1949. One ball, no strikes. Heinzelman throwing, Jerry takes inside, ball two. Two and oh. 
Rockies, of course, to try and throw this fellow off the mark, especially since he gave up the run with two gone in the third. When Rizzuto had walked, stole second, and took third on a bad throw by Semenik, and Coleman singled him home. Two and nothing pitch. Strike one call. Caught the inside corner with a pretty fast hook. Slender number 42, Jerry Coleman. Born in San Jose, living in San Francisco, California. Two and one. Two gone. The pitch. Low and outside. Ball three. Now the crowd begins murmuring. They sense, of course, that uh, the Yankees did something similar before, and there is a power driver coming up. Yogi Berra. Should Coleman stay alive? And on percentage, Yogi would be due since he is hitless today. Three and one. Got to make this one good. He pitches. Strike two ball. Full count. Now Coleman steps out for a moment. Tugging on his cat. Big Ben. Getting a toe hold. Full count. Coleman steps out for a moment, tugging on his cat, digs in, getting a toe hold, string runs out, finds him in pitches, he swings and sends a foul just beyond third base coach Corsetti of the Yankees, still three and two, ball uh, rolls out a short left field, and Hammer jogs over to throw it out. Two to one, Phillies lead, last half of the eighth inning, third game of the 1950 Ball Classic. Two men gone for New York, and Coleman three and two. New ball in play, Heinz Coleman set, pitches. High inside, ball four. In the bullpen, Constanti gets the sign to warm up for the Phillies. All the while, Ferrick has been heating up, and I mean, you've got to heat up today in the right field Yankee bullpen. So you have two premier relievers of the National and American League getting set for possible duty. The runner at first, Coleman, represents the potential tying run. Dara is the batter. And Yogi looks at a high, wide pitch for ball one. That was the fourth walk given up by Hanselman. He touches. The pitch is taken inside around the chin. Ball two. And uh, seeing that his uh, veteran left-hander is in trouble, Semenik, the Phil's catcher, walks out to the mound to talk things over with Lefty Kent. 10,000 bleacher seats and standing room admissions go on sale tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here at New York Yankee Stadium. For those of you with an earshot and travel shot of this radio baseball arena. Two and out of Berra. Yogi has one of the four passes dished out by Hanselin. He grounded out weakly in the fourth to the pitcher and then fouled out to Simonek the catcher. 0 for 2. And 2 and 0. The pitch. Ball three. Three and 0. Hanselin has lost the target. And ball four. Two close and hard. third base dugout. That's familiar. Ambling walk. Uh, we note, and Mel, I think you'll bear me out, that uh, uh, Constanti didn't get the sign to warm up until a few moments ago. He usually takes 20 pitches, at least, a varied uh, deliveries to get himself heated up well enough to enter a ball game. Especially now with the tying run at second base, the lead run at first base, two men out in the last of the eighth, and the Phillies leading two to one. Uh, did you see uh, Constanti get up a short while ago? Just a moment ago, that's right, Dean. He's, uh, had, he's almost had time to get his 20 pitches in, but uh, not too much time really to get really warm. 
Musselman will oftentimes run the count full, as he did when he walked Coleman. But when he uh, lost Vera on 3-0, and Sawyer became a bit concerned. They are leaving Heinzelman in the game. And he is facing the man who broke up yesterday's struggle in the 10th inning. Joe DiMaggio with one for three. This is the big moment for Yankee Hope. Time is called, and uh, Heinzelman strolls off the mound, pounding ball into glove all the way. Seminick jogs out. DiMaggio, phlegmatic in appearance, a great performer in his ninth World Series. So he's on. Heinzelman in the stretch with one of the first and second. Delivers. Inside high. Joe had to back away, twisting his neck on that one. Ball one. He fly to Anderson right in the first, singled to short left in the fourth, and fly to left in the sixth. Ball two is wide. Two next is Hank Bauer. There are two men gone. Barra at first base, Jerry Coleman at second for the Yankees. The lead lead, two to one. Last to the eighth. Two and nothing pitch. Wide and high. Ball three. If nothing else, this has allowed Constanti to get warmer. For he is now three and nothing to DiMaggio. He pitches. Ball four. I believe that they are going to call Jim Constanti into the ball game. Uh, Bauer is signaled for the Yankee dugout by Stingle as they'll talk over offensive strategy. The bases are loaded on three straight walks to Coleman, Vera, and DiMaggio with two men out. And Constanti is being waved in from the Phil bullpen. As he makes the long trip from left field, we pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. at Yankee Stadium in New York, Jim Constanti is greeted with cheers, starting in left, which will probably pick up as he walks in toward the mound. He, of course, broke the all-time record for relief appearances and game appearances by a single pitcher, going to the Knolls 74 different times during the 1950 season. He was a surprise starter in the opening game of the World Series and virtually matched Rashi pitch for pitch. He lost one to nothing and allowed New York four hits and one run earned in the eight innings he worked. Heinzelman will now be retired after having hurled seven and two-thirds innings. He has given up one run earned and four hits, but he has walked six men and apparently, undoubtedly, as a matter of fact, was firing. He just wasn't near the plate at all on DiMaggio, and uh, to Berra, he was 3-0. and That means that he uh, threw four, eight, nine straight bat pitches. Here's a hand for Heinzelman. I imagine even the uh, most optimistic of Heinzelman's personal supporters have been surprised that he worked this long. Concerning Constanti's work in relief, Sawyer has oftentimes said, give me a pitcher who hurls seven effective innings to tie them or head them by just one, and then Constanti will do the rest. He is not necessarily a cold-weather performer and was ineffective in the latter stages of the campaign, but he certainly proved his worth and, of course, did not make uh, Sawyer look bad when he uh, started out. Who has a tremendous World Series batting average? Bobby Brown, who was three for eight on this series, and before it was nine for 15 for a total of 12 for 23. Now, how's that for batting average? That's, uh, that's about a 525 batting average in World Series play. He, of course, got the skimming double off what Constanti said was his slider pitch. And it was uh, the one blow which set up the run that won the game for Vic Grashy and the fourth inning on the opening day of the Classic. So he is going to swing for Hank Bauer, who, though a long ball hitter, single is playing percentage now. He sends the left-handed swinger up there, Doc Brown. 
Two men out. The base is loaded. Cincinnati into the familiar windup. Delivers. Low. Ball one. Usually, these are the situations that uh, Cincinnati revels in. He steps off to grab the powder. This is the last of the eighth. A real exciting frame. Three walks. Bases loaded. One and nothing pitch. A swing and a foul. Upstairs. Out of play. Strike one. We meant to describe Constanti's palm ball to you on opening day. He holds the ball at the base of his forefinger and middle finger and releases the fingers on the pitch at the last instant. It breaks down, and unlike many other palm balls, which are used as change-ups by hurlers, it has spin to it and breaks away suddenly. He mixes it with a slider and screwball. He's ready for 1-1 pitch. Down swing, a foul. Behind the plate, strike two. This is the tenth inning because the Yankee power already has been up, uh, considering that Berra and DiMaggio will hit that long ball for you. And that Coleman has played very great baseball in this series. Coleman at third, Berra at second, DiMaggio at first. The count is one and two on Bobby Brown, batting for Hank Bauer. Against reliever Jim Constanti. The right-hander hits, throws. He swings and lofts the foul toward left. Mayo races for the ball but can't make it. Defensively now, you know, Mayo has supplanted Sisler in left field. Ashburn in center. Ennis in right. The infield is Pat. Wakefield, Goliath, Hamner, and Jones. And uh, Constanti and Sunnick decide to uh, talk a little bit out there midway between mound and plate. one, Phillies lead, but the Yankees are in a threat. The base is loaded with two gone. Now, Constanti in a motion, throws. He swings and comes a ground ball to Hanna. How about it? He bobbles it. The run scores. safely on that last play. The throw to Jones is a bit high. One on one to Myers. Pitch. Swings and a two. Strike two. That's the second fill error in this game. Zeminick having had commit, uh, committed one or earlier. One and two count. The Constanti pitch. My swings and zips the foul wide of the bag along the first base line by a foot. The line umpire, Bill McKinley out there, throws it out of play. Red clay serves as the protective warning to fielders as they run near the other stand for chances on the outfield and the foul territory and the infield. Still one and two on Johnny Myers. Base is loaded with the Yankees. Two guys ready for the pitch. He throws. He swings. There's a high pop near the stands at third. Jones going over near it and makes it. Well, that was an exciting eighth inning. The Yankees score one run unearned. There were three walks given up to Heinzelman, and the run is charged to him. The arrow was made by Hamner as Brown batted for Bauer facing Constanti. 
There were no hits. There was one error, and three Yankees were left on. Eight innings, score tied. The Phillies two, the Yankees two. Men in modern Gillette one-piece razors are the finest shaving instruments money can buy. They give you slick, good-looking shaves, comfortably, and save you time as well. You see, there's nothing to take apart or put together. You change blades instantly. What's more, to clean, you just loosen the holder, rinse, and shake. Buy a Gillette one-piece razor. Any model you select includes a supply of Gillette blue blades and is attractively packaged in a permanent travel case. The base on balls has proven a big nemesis to the Phil's pitchers today. The Yankees scored on a walk to Rizzuto with two gone, a stolen base by Phil, and a bad throw by Semenik, allowing him to move to third. Then Coleman drilled him home with a single to left. Virtually the same thing happened in the eighth, except that this time, Hanksman lost the mark entirely. On the hook for this game will be the relief pitchers for the time being, with big Tom Ferry moving in. Now, Joe Collins, who was uh, nurtured in the Yankee farm system, is going to be the first baseman. And Woodling, who batted for Lopat, is going to play left field. That means Woodling will bat ninth. And it means that Collins will bat number five. Brown, you see, uh, batted for Bauer, and uh, Jensen ran for him. So Collins has moved into the number five slot right now in your batting array. Cincinnati is in Ferrick's game now, either to win or to lose. Both Lopat and Heinzelman are off the hook. Now, uh, as to uh, which pitcher outpitched uh, which, uh, in this ball game, you might say that Heinzelman was naturally more effective. The run scored on the error, but he did display vast ineffectiveness by passing the three men, Coleman, Berra, and DiMaggio. However, uh, Officially, at least, Gaines saying the fact uh, that the walks did cause trouble. The error was the big boot. Barrick's record, appearing in 46 games, both as a Brownie and a Cardinal, 81 innings pitched. He won nine and lost seven. Uh, Brownie and a Yankee, of course. Uh, St. Louis Browns, New York Yankees. Came uh, to the Yanks in that big trade at midseason. So the... Uh, Adopted Philadelphian faces Granny Hamner. Right hander delivers. Hamner swings. A long drive to left center field. Camacho going way, way back. Can't get it. Moving toward the wall. Here's Hamner moving to second base. But a great save by Camacho. Holds him to two. A great save. A double by Hamner. That is his third World Series double. And his third hit of the ball game. That was a tremendous drive at least 400 feet away from home plate. And in Shy Park was a home run. DiMaggio running toward the ball, picked up the ball with his bare hand while it was hopping. And but for that, Hamner would have had three. Time is tall. Terminic conversing with Sawyer. And Hamner runs in from the back at second to talk things over with his skipper and uh, bench police and Benny Bengoff. Well, uh, I believe that ball was hit as long as any in the series, including uh, Joe's jolt yesterday. Uh, it dropped down there pretty close to the uh, red clay, and Joe, of course, made a great play on it, running away from the infield. So Hamner picks up a towering double. Number three in the series. The infield moseys up closely. Semenik is the batter. One for two officially. A single, a strikeout, and a sacrifice. Ferrick in the stretch. Delivery. High, outside, a pitch out. Ball one. Berra shifted to his own right in an effort perhaps to uh, keep Hamner alive at second base. Rizzuto is close to the bag as a shortstop. Ferrick in the stretch checks him. Delivers. There's a pop to third, a scoop, and the runner runs to third base, and here's the throw to first in time. Now, uh, Johnson had a chance to grab that ball on a fly, but preferred to scoop it up and 
possibly hold Hammer at second base. Instead, Hammer, with Rizzuto near the bag, ran behind the third baseman, Johnson, and virtually waltzed into the hot corner. And Semenik, who could hardly run at all, uh, limped down to first base. Uh, Johnson held on to the ball like it was a hot potato. It goes as a sacrifice. It moves Hammer to the third base. And the play is Johnson to the first baseman, Joe Collins. That was really a unique play, and I'm sure will be talked about tonight. They're going to put Goliath on, and uh, Whitman is going to back for Constanti. There's ball one wide, and Ferrick throws wide again, ball two. Well, I've never seen one like that in quite a while. It appeared as though Johnson just didn't know what to do with the ball, but that his first thought was to let the ball drop so that he could scoop it up and make sure that he could check the man at second and throw Semenik out at first. To grab the ball on the fly, he still would have held the man at second, who was way off the bag. I think the fact that second wasn't covered at the time confused Bill because, you see, on the bunt, the second baseman was moving over to first to cover, and Rizzuto was near the bag. So Goliath has now been passed intentionally. Hamner is at third. There was one man out, and Whitman will bat for Constanti. So, Soya must give up Constanti to a pinch hitter. Whitman has been walked once in the World Series in his previous lone appearance. He bats left-handed. The infield is all the way in. Tom Ferrick in the stretch. Delivers. High and wide. Ball wide. This is the top of the ninth. The score is tied. Two and two. We've had a lot of excitement here. For you fans on Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports broadcast. One or nothing pitch. Wide. But on the corner. But ball strike one. On the corner. He threw him outside and caught the corner. Strike one. One ball, one strike. One gone, runners on at first and third. The stretch by Faraki pitches. Six swings, a fly, lost it foul, on a play. First base side and downstairs. Strike two, Whitman is from Oregon. First day, he says, you reckon those folks out in Eugene, Oregon, are happy about the way the Phil's played? He was born in Woodburn and will celebrate his 30th birthday the 9th of next month. 5'11", 170. The square shoulder chap with sharp features and he is now making the bid in his second World Series. He played, you see, for Brooklyn last season. So there's a fellow that's really been playing in good fortune. One and two count. Brooklyn, the pinch hitter for Constanti. Eric hides the ball behind his right knee. Gets the sign, moves into the stretch. Delivers. Whitman swings. A ground foul. First base side. Just to the right of the Yankee dugout. Still one and two. Call of the ninth. There's a hard stopper this ball game. Two and two tie. One gone. Two on. Goldie at it first. Hannah at third. Field still close. Eric has the peculiar sign of hiding the ball behind his right knee. Ready on one and two pitch. Slow stretch. Delivers. The swing. A slow ground ball. Caught first. Collins doubled it. Go to the plate. He is out. Fielder's choice play and a fine one by first sacker Joe Collins. The reserves today, and the bench of single is again asserting itself. If not offensively, then certainly defensively. And here comes Casey again out of the New York dugout. Wake kisses the batter. There are two gone. The play went to first baseman Joe Collins to the catcher Yogi Berra, who planted his compact body to guard the plate to on-rushing runner Granny Henry. That's two down. Goliath moving to second. And uh, Hamner retired at the plate what we call a 3-2 play if you're keeping score on a radio scorecard today. Boy, 
what they're pulling the stoppers out on the strategy today. The veteran campaigner Stengel, who was once a Phil. And now we have another move by Zoya, a runner for Goliath. Goliath is what might be termed medium fast with his feet. And uh, Ralph Caballero, New Orleans lad, is making his second pinch running appearance of the World Series. Running for Goliath. So that means that the game, uh, well, uh, of course the game will move into the last tonight. Bloodworth would be the second baseman for the Phillies. C-A-B-A-L-L-E-R-O. Now Wakus is the batter. One for four. Swings left-handed. Runners leading off first and second. Big Ferrick in a motion. Delivers. Strike one ball. His inner defense came to his rescue that time. And it forced the Phils to give up their ace reliever, Constanti, you see. So that Stengel's move for the time being uh, looks sharp for the second guesses tonight. Nothing in one to Wakus. The pitch. He swings. Sends a high fly to short right. Pulling in on the ball. Cliff Nate calling for it. He has it. Guys retired. And a big Bill threat is snuffed out on fine relief pitching by Tom Derrick and an alert Yankee defense which for the moment committed an error of omission when uh, Billy Johnson, the third baseman, uh, forgot for the moment as to where to throw the ball. So the side is retired in the top of the ninth. No runs. One hit, a double by Hamner, which is a race at the plate. A walk thrown in intentionally. No errors by the Yankees. And two fills left on. At the end of eight and a half, moving to the nub end now. A 2-2 two -two tie. And let's see what manager Eddie Sawyer has to offer up in the way of a relief early. He has not as yet made his appearance. Moving out, Russ Meyer. This is his second relief appearance. He gave up one hit in the first game when he, in turn, relieved Constanti as a starter. It was a topper down the third baseline on which Jones couldn't handle and then retired the side without any further trouble after that. So he has hurled one inning of series play. His uh, National League seasonal record with the Phillies, 9 and 11. So Sawyer is going with Meyer, who has uh, some of the finest breaking stuff in the National League. He calls a whip crack curve and a screwball. Well, Mel, are we going to have a marathon again today? Hard to say, Gene, but I know as far as the fans are concerned, maybe they don't care. Maybe they would like to have some extra innings because they love their baseball. Well, a big break in the game, of course, has been the bobble of shortstop. And the Phil Phil certainly uh, had a grand opportunity in the top of the ninth on Hamner's uh, double. And when you consider the fact that uh, Johnson did not catch Semenik's hard hit, bunt pop on the fly, uh, you uh, again uh, see the Yankee traditional courage being shored up. Also, DiMaggio's play and saving uh, the double that could have easily been a triple against any other center fielder. Uh, Jimmy Bloodworth moves in as a second baseman. He's a veteran campaigner of both leagues. He uh, played for both Detroit and Washington, for the Pittsburgh Pirates, for the Cincinnati Reds, and was secured in a deal on the 11th of May from the Reds by the Phillies, as the utility infielder has done a grand job. Now, Russ Meyer in the last of the night. He faces Billy Johnson, the third baseman. The curve is low and wide. Ball one. Johnson to be followed by Cliff Mapes and then the pitcher, Tom Ferrick. Last of the ninth, tie score, 2-2. The pitch, strike one goal, overhand curve ball. Meyer very rarely throws a straight ball except on a waste pitch or a bait. He'll throw the hook and the screw ball. One and one. Lanky right-hander delivers wide. Ball two. Two and one. Johnson is 0 for 3. He struck out twice to Heinzelman and bounced out third to first. Two ball, one strike out. Meyer winding, delivery. Ball three, low inside. That first man on in a tie game at the nub end. Of course, is the big break. That an explosive club such as the Yanks, though all three games have been 
tighter than drums. Three and one. He throws. Strike two for another down breaking jug handle curve. Heinzelman and Hurl, the first seven and two thirds. And Sandy got the final man out in the eighth, but he went out for the pinch hitter. As Sawyer had a gamble to take away his uh, ace reliever. The full count to Billy Johnson. The big pitch. He swings. The line drive. Deep to left. Mayo moving back. Grabs it. He almost overplayed the ball. Moving back. And then moved in a stride. Planted his feet on the side. And speared it for the put out. One down. Now Mapes. The big bit for the Yankee home run came from another left-handed swinger. Johnny Mize. Who is now out of the game. Mapes, batting left-handed, takes strike one call. The screwball caught the outside corner. The fast pitch, and it's thrown, of course, with a wrist breaking in, and uh, away to left-handed batters from a right-hander. Second pitch, strike two call. That screwball broke a foot. This fellow is a tremendous campaigner, Meyer. He, uh, of course has been his own worst enemy at times in trying to curb his temper, but he has a, an enormous desire to win. Nothing in two. One away, nobody on. Last of the ninth, tie score 2-2. Two, two. Russ Meyer delivers. Mapes swings and misses. Struck him out. Now, Woodling, that is the pitcher, of course, is moved up in the slot. Woodling, who is the left fielder. The pitcher would then bat fifth, and the first baseman, Collins, would move up sixth. The batting order should read Rizzuto, Coleman, Barra, DiMaggio. The pitcher, Collins, Johnson, Mapes, and Woodling, who is batting in ninth position, but playing left field. Batting left at it. Meyer delivers. Strike one ball. This is the second trip for Gene. He popped out to short as a pinch hitter for Lopat in the eighth inning. Swings and cuts the foul behind the plate on a ball that was delivered high and was starting to break down low. Gene was trying to meet the ball on a hanging break and got a lazy foul rolling behind the plate. Strike two. Strike two. Two gone, nobody on. Last half of the ninth inning. Woodling left-handed swinger. Myra, way ahead, 0-2. Score tied, 2-2. In the big, majestic motion. He kicks, delivers. As a hopper over the mound. Moving in, Bloodworth. Up with it. Drops it. Throws the first. Not in time. Up, down, up again. Throw not in time. It may go. No, it goes as an error on the... Base hit, base hit. A uh, switched off. An infield single to the second baseman. Scratch. Now Rizzuto. That was a high chopping ball that went behind the mound. Bloodworth charged it, and in an anxiety to throw to first, lost it entirely. But it went as a single to the second baseman. Strike one called on Rizzuto. Third ball. Bill is all for two officially. He was passed twice by Heinzelman. Popped to second and bounced out to third. All trips again, Heinzelman. As a matter of fact, uh, he was the second out before Ken walked three Yankees in a row in that big eighth inning. Nothing in one to Bill. The pitch. Ball one. Just a bit. Weeds a bit low and outside. One on one. One ball, one strike. Two gone, runner at first base, Gene Woodling. Meyer and a big stretch. Six throws. A swing, a line drive, a sweet three by uh, Woodworth. The runner kicks the ball. The runner kicks the ball, and he may. No, he calls him safe. Uh, Woodworth dives to his own right to trap the ball, which he did, but it scooted back to the bag. In the meantime, Woodling slid, but was already in the bag when the ball hit his foot. So, uh, a 
As far as Conlon was concerned, he had reached base safely. He had reached second court and thus uh, did not kick the ball while in actual play. It was one of those things having already touched the fielder. So everybody is safe, and it goes as a single off the second base. play, uh, Bloodworth made a game effort, you see, to uh, move the ball, kick it almost, as a matter of fact, back to the back, so that Hamna could pick the ball up to try to force, but it went for naught. We see no uh, Philly bullpen activity. The Yankees have runners on at first and second, Woodling at second, Rosito with a single. At first, the first hit, of course, was a scratcher. The second was a pretty well-hit ball, and Bloodworth made a college try effort on it, preventing it from rolling to the outfield. Now, uh, Jerry Coleman, who knocked in the first run. Though the Yankees have scored two, the second run officially was not batted in. It came home on an error. Bobby Brown was batting for Hank Bauer, with the bases loaded and two gone in the eighth inning. And as Hammer raced towards second base to pick it up, and forced out DiMaggio coming in. He lost the handle. Well, we've had uh, some odd feeling plays, but it's one of those uh, kind of games on which the fans peer forward, edge forward on their seat, ready for the break. Now the right hand of Meyer facing Coleman, a right handed batter. Delivers. Strike one call. Curveball. It's a rough inning now. Last of the ninth. And a do or die threat. By the Yankees here at the tail end of the regulation distance. No ball, one strike count. He checks his second. He comes to the plate. A high curve, too close. Ball one. Jerry has two hits. And he lined into a double play and uh, he had a walk thrown in. Matter of fact, uh, he batted in first run and scored the second for New York. That came in the uh, eighth inning. Yankees scored their first and the third. And the Phillies the sixth and the seventh. But a great opportunity wiped out in the ninth. One-on-one count to Coleman. The delivery, the swing. A fly ball toward deep left center field. Moving over for the ball. Can't get it. Being close. Close is a single. The Yankees win. Three to two. Coming across the plate is Gene Woodley. They were playing on shallow, and the ball dropped in between Ashburn and Jackie Mayo in left center field, and Jerry Coleman thus becomes the hitting hero of the New York Yankees, who consequently sweep the first three games of the World Series all by one run margin. One to nothing, two to one, and three to two. And Russ Meyer, of course, is a very, very unhappy person right now as he slopes toward the dugout and gives his outfielders a dark look. Well, two speedy men, Mayo and Ashburn, could not catch up with the ball. So the winning runner scored and is earned with two out. One run, three hits, no errors, and two men left on. The New York Yankees, three runs, seven hits, no errors. The Phillies, two runs, ten hits, two errors. The winning pitcher is Ferrick. The losing pitcher is Meyer. A great ball game brought with consistent drills all afternoon with a big break came when Hannah erred in the eighth to allow the tying run to score and the Yanks wiped out a big Phil threat in the top of the ninth. And that's all she wrote before 64,505 this afternoon on Gillette's Cavalcade of Sports.